most keen gardeners really like to push the boundaries as to what they can grow in terms of tender plants and I'm no exception. I love my plumbagos, my chilies, a range of citrus, tender jasmines and so on. And in the springtime, I love to get out my vegetables, my beans, my courgettes, my squashes, really as early as possible so the roots can get well down and then they can withstand future summer droughts. So in days gone by, we used to listen to the weather forecast. I used to look up at the sky and if it was very clear and sunny, it would be much more likely that there might be a frost than if it was damp, overcast and cloudy. But now, of course, with weather apps, that's all completely changed. So which are the best weather apps? For me, there's no better person to ask than Peter Gibbs. Peter Gibbs is ex-Met Office, he was a BBC weather forecast and of course he's chairman of BBC Radio 4's Gardener's Question Time and he's a mustard keen gardener. For me they have revolutionised my garden mm -hmm. because I can tell if there's going to be a frost. You know I don't just have to look up at the sky and think oh I think we're going to frost tonight and that's really helpful if you're putting out early crops and things like that. So I'm sure you use those all the time. And is the one that you think is particularly good? I think one thing that people don't realise is that there, is, there isn't just one forecast. Um, there's not just one source of weather forecast that goes firing out to all these different apps. Mm -hmm. um, different organisations around the world all produce their own forecast. They take in all the observations from all around the world and then they stick it into the computer. It does lots of calculations and out comes the forecast at the other end. Uh, the three big ones that do that are the Met Office, of course, the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasting, which is probably the one that most people haven't uh, heard of, but is generally regarded as being probably the best uh, oh, really? in terms of accuracy. The American Weather Service. Understandably, you know, the American computer forecast model is tuned to be best for American weather. Uh, perhaps performs a little less well across our part of the world, whereas the Met Office uh, model, the European model, they tend to focus a bit more. They're global models. They'll give you a forecast mm. for anywhere in the world, but they are particularly tuned to do well across our part of the world. So my two go-tos are the, the Met Office and the BBC apps. Uh, the Met Office app purely uses Met Office forecast data. The BBC app uses a bit of a blend. So it, it, it takes some Met Office stuff, it takes some ECMWF stuff, it might take some American stuff, and it decides which it likes the best and will actually put that into the, into the forecast. Um, they're pretty good these days. And I think, you know, most occasions, as you say, they will give you a really good steer. The, the times they don't do so well is when we've got showery situations because heavy showers by their nature are pretty random things. And so it's asking a lot for an app to tell you exactly when a shower is going to occur mm. over your garden. Mm. I think in those sort of situations, you need to uh, accessorize with uh, a weather radar app, which is showing you exactly where the rain is at any given moment. So your app, your BBC or Met Office app will tell you, oh, there's likely to be showers today. So that gives you the heads up. If it's really crucial that you have to do something in the dry, then you open up your weather radar app. And I use one called uh, Rain Alarm, um, but there are several others. Um, and then you can see if there's something actually heading towards you in the next, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour. Mm -hmm. So just use the two in conjunction and you'll get a much better idea. Big weather system, steaming in from the Atlantic, middle of winter, you know, big widespread rain. The apps will do a fantastic job. They'll yeah. tell you when the rain's going to start, when the rain's going to stop, how windy it's going to be. But it's those showery situations. You just have to be a little bit smarter, a little bit more Local. careful. And, yes. and would the same be for frost? Because that's my the one that I'm always on the watch out for. So for that, I should use the radar one too. Uh, the radar one won't do anything for frost. That will only oh, well. tell you about rainfall. So right. you do need to stick with your apps there. Yes. But it's it's worth perhaps looking at more than one. Yeah. So 
getting what we call an ensemble forecast. It's actually a technique that the big forecasters use where they run the same model several times and get lots of different answers and then see what the sort of average is or what the most likely thing is from that. You can do something very similar, not quite as sophisticated, but just by looking at two or three apps, you know, ensemble. and if two or three is good. Ensemble forecasting. I ensemble like forecasting, yes. Yeah, gardener. <laughs> <laughs> Love so, that. you know, it, so if, if two are saying it's going to be frosty tonight, the other one's saying, well, it's going to stay just above, then you're oh, going to think, well, it, well, yeah, it, it looks a bit dodgy. I'm going to go with the with the frost forecast. Lovely. Oh, that's really helpful. That's brilliant information. Thank you very much, Peter. I um, would just add to that, Bunny, the temperatures that you see in those apps will be an air temperature. So it'll be the temperature up at eye level. So don't so forget. It's to be colder. It'll be colder on the ground. Yeah. Right. And it could be by seven degrees. It, yeah. In, in extreme cases, extreme. it could be. But in normal cases, two or three degrees. If we're talking, you know, if we're talking spring and we're at that sort of time where we're thinking about putting tender stuff out, so it's really quite crucial, I would suggest if you see anything on your app that's giving an air temperature for your location, your specific location, of less than sort of five or six degrees, I, 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 would, I would be yeah. cautious and think yeah. there's a chance down on the ground where your plants are of there being at least a touch of frost. Mm. Gosh, that is good advice. Thank you very much indeed. I should get some invest in some more fleece, I think. <laughs> okay. Well, that's yeah, it does a great job, of course, doesn't it? It does an amazingly uh, good job. Just six a bit degrees of degrees if you yeah, have the Absolutely. Stuff. Amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Lovely. Thanks a lot, Peter. That's really kind. In the next video, I'll be chatting to Peter again, this time about frost and how to protect your plants from it. See you then.